from the information already displayed, I can tell that most of the schools are not democratic. In Brazil, there are a few democratic schools, but they are the other ones out there, the minorities, because most of the schools are dictatorship based. In England, Summerhill School was the first democratic school, but it still is the other one out, meaning um, even though there are some other democratic schools, the democratic schools, democra democracy isn't the, the principal type of school structure used in England. And in Korea, most, if not all, of the schools are not democratic, they're teacher-based and extremely dictatorship-based. But I believe that most of the schools are not democratic because problems are dealt with much faster in a dictatorship. The rules can be made with less bureaucracy and the competitive schools overlook the students' opinions so that they can teach faster and get their students better grades, even if they leave the school with nothing but facts and knowledge and not, not many democratic skills and administrative skills. Democratic schools give power to students. The students can actively participate in the running of the school and they are able to shape, shape the study environment to benefit themselves instead of allowing the teachers and head to create an environment for themselves and they'll have to adapt it to, it to them. And that process will, may take a lot of time. Students in democratic schools will also learn a lot of skills which students in uh, dictatorship based schools will not. For example, students in democratic schools may learn administrative and skills and skills of how to live in a democracy especially if they live in a democratic country that's very important because they will be able to to exercise their demo democratic power when they grow up in a larger scale in a country scale also students will have the experience of running a full-size corporation if they if they live in a democratic environment meaning they'll have the experience of actually running a business for example or a, or maybe even a country because they will know the, all the problems you have to solve they will have the experience and they will have the social skills they'll have a series of skills which will help them in the long run another big problem here is that private schools can usually choose whichever system they prefer because if the student doesn't like the, the studying environment he could simply, the school could simply ask him to leave because he, it's a paid school. They don't have to, to listen to the government or to any other institutions. They are a private school. Students aren't given the chance to, to argument that the school should change in private schools. They, because even if they try to change, even if the head allows them to change, in the schools where the head doesn't allow them to change, the, school, the students don't have any power at all. And the students suffer this unchangeability, meaning they, if they can't change, they'll have to cope with the, with the study environment they're given, even if that isn't a, a very good for them. And the dictatorship-based schools usually impress students. For example, students do not have as many options as they would have in a democratic school or in a school with at least a bit of democracy. For example, many times uh, they do not take in consideration that students are different. So perhaps they force the students to have a preset schedule, which will obviously imply that they'll have classes and subjects which maybe they're not good in, and the school maybe expects all the students to excel in those subjects and perhaps the student doesn't have the intellectual capabilities or that's or he doesn't like the learning style and he will never be able to change that or adapt that system if the school is dictatorship based and if the school doesn't allow the student to take to input his 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 feelings what is trying like the school doesn't allow itself to change by the student's criticism and also in adult life we live in a democracy here in brazil so, when we grow up, we will have freedom of choice to do whatever we want, as if we were living in a, a school democracy. And I believe that retentions in, in dictatorship-based schools are, are not very fair. 
because students are not, aren't given a trial. In Brazil, if someone kills another person, they are given a trial. Why shouldn't a student be given a trial before being punished if he did something much, much um, uh, more common, like forgetting his homework or losing his homework? And the retentions are given at, given at will. The teachers do not take into consideration what the students say if they're trying to defend themselves. The teachers, sometimes, they don't admit that they were wrong, and they, they give the retention nonetheless to the students. So the students don't have any power to argue with about that. And I also believe that retentions are merely a form of punishment. They're not um, a form of correction to the students. Maybe the student will get, won't get any better by, by being punished. Retentions are like a, a method to select the students who don't have any difficulties and make the students who have any, some difficulties with maybe with organization, with um, keeping to their deadlines, maybe the students who are not mature enough, they're, they're being... They're being left out. Mere punishment, as in giving a retention, is simply a negative motivator. So, if the student is afraid of getting a retention, he will probably keep to, to not doing anything wrong and handing in his homework, but it, in the long run that will seriously affect his will to, uh, to create nice job, like to do a nice job, to put his effort into his work. One possible future scenario, which is very likely to happen, is that students might want a democracy. In fact, it is already happening in many schools, including my own. But for it to happen, more than a few students should get together, because if only a few students pledge for democracy, they might be ignored or even punished, depending on the school. The government, government or a private organization should help by teaching about the benefits of democracy and by giving lectures to instruct the staff and the students about the, how democracy would be a better for them. And if still democracy isn't given, the government should pass on a law which demands schools to be democratic to some extent. Maybe they shouldn't become ex fully democratic, but they should include some form of democracy enough for the students to be satisfied. If all schools became direct democracies, the student could utilize that power for personal interests. Students might focus on things that aren't essentially academic and that might harm the academic achievement of the students in that school. Many students in most schools might not be mature enough to, run, to have the responsibility of running an, a democratic school. So I would suggest as a course of action that we could make schools a mixture of both, the, both democracy and representative government, meaning the students should select a representative and the rules should be made before turning the school into a democracy to prevent improper use of power. And the following rules, the next rules, should be made by combination of direct voting and discussions between the representative and a student council to prevent any harmful use of power. Another possible future scenario is that students might want retention systems to change. In fact, this is something that also is already happening in my school and in some other schools in Sao Paulo and in the world. Retention systems should change so that the student gets a chance to defend himself. The student should get a chance to be listened to and to present his argument before being punished. But instead of doing a complete trial every time a student is given retention, he should be able to protest if he thinks he does not reserve the retention. Then the class should listen to his defense, statements and judge whether he deserves it or not. Retentions should be more than a mere sort of punishment. Retentions could become a form of correction as well. So when a student is given a retention, he should be sent during his free time to a class where he is able to correct any faults. For example, if a student is unorganized, during his free time he is sent to an, a class where he learns how to be organized. Or if the student misbehaves, he is sent to a class appropriate to correcting his behavior. 
Retentions would still be a form of punishment, because it would be taking time from their free time. But also, it would become something constructive, and would become more effective as a form of teaching.